Welcome back to Tech Coach Corner, everyone. I'm Tiara Lustig, your host, and today I'm talking with Ari Fluelling about how to differentiate professional development for teachers from a tech coach's perspective. Before we jump into the episode, just want to remind everyone to subscribe to Dino's YouTube channel and don't forget to follow us on all of our social media channels. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, wherever you are, we are there too. So go ahead and follow us there so you never miss out on anything that we're putting out. We also are going to have an exciting event coming up with Monica Burns uh, in, a, in a couple weeks. So keep an eye out for that. That's going to be a great event and we will let you all know when registration is open. I don't think I have anything else to plug today, so let's jump into the episode. Welcome back to Tech Coach Corner, everyone. I'm Tiara Lustig, your host, and today I am joined by Ari Fluelling. Um, Ari, would you mind giving a brief introduction to yourself before we get started? Of course, and thanks again for having me. So I am a former high school English teacher, former K-12 district technology coach, and now I work with districts across the West Coast to provide technology implementation, uh, coaching and guidance and consulting, all with the pedagogy first lens. Wonderful. Well, I'm excited to have you on the show today. Um, one thing you talk a lot about is professional development and technology coaching. And I think this time of remote learning has made a lot more teachers technology comfortable because they've had to use technology. But still, there is kind of a, a range of teacher comfort levels with technology um, and kind of their use of technology. So what would you say for differentiating professional development for teachers of all technology levels, uh, whether they be in remote learning, hybrid learning or in the classroom? Of course. So first, offer synchronous opportunities and offer asynchronous opportunities, even if the asynchronous is a recording of the synchronous, just because you want to make sure that you're able to accommodate different schedules. Uh, even before, you know, the pandemic, when I was providing face-to-face -face professional development, I was based out of the district office and teachers that wanted to attend were on the other side of town and it could take them an hour to get from their school site to get to me. So I would have to accommodate that schedule. You know, now moving forward, maybe I can live stream my PD to them, which would be really cool in the future. But, you know, in the remote world, kind of the equivalent of that would be offering synchronous and asynchronous. And then of course, I think too, it's important to differentiate between professional development and training. Uh, just because the way I look at it is training is really focusing on access and points and clicks. So how do I create my Microsoft team? How do I make a document in Google Classroom so every kid gets their own individual copy? Those are the things that they're not related to pedagogy. It's just, this is the button you click to do that. So I think it's important to have that. And then also to make sure that you kind of, you offer different levels. So, you know, the, the way I like to think of it is not so much of like, you know, novice to expert is more, in the idea of, I've never heard of this tool before. I use it, you know, maybe once or twice a year, use it once a month, I use it once a week, and I couldn't run my classroom without it. Just because um, naturally, we're all really bad at judging how good we are at something. Um, so I think if you kind of put it in those terms, it helps teacher better identify their skill level. So that way they can make sure they're in the right room where they need to be. Because there's nothing more frustrating than being in a professional development and feeling like, you know, you're not getting anything out of it because you already know it, or you're not getting anything out of it because it's assuming you have background knowledge that you don't. So definitely want to make sure that you level it. And then separate from the points and clicks side of things, when we think about pedagogy and professional development, it's really focusing in on student engagement and X app or uh, literary, literacy and X app and putting what is what are the pedagogical strategies, what is the content level first, and then linking those technology tools into it. Just so that way we can remind, or not remind, but we can continue to emphasize what are those best practices that we know have worked either because we've seen them work from teacher testimonies during remote learning or they're things that we implemented before the pandemic as a part of district initiatives. And now we're presenting how to tweak them in a remote and hybrid setting. And again, of course, definitely level those things as well. So that way folks can self-select and think about what they need. And then also I would say when we're differentiating, 
is this idea of structured choice. So there's so many apps, there's so many things out there that teachers can use. And, you know, shout out to all the different ed tech companies that allowed educators to use so many different parts and features of their platform for free. But as a district, it's really hard to support everything. And especially too, as these platforms continue to update, it's really hard to make sure that your district PD reflects the PD um, or reflects the needs of the platform. So I like to say structured choice in the sense that if we're talking about um, doing lab work in a science class, these are the three apps that our district supports. And here are the different professional developments for that. So that way the teacher still has the opportunity to pick which app they use best, but it's been signed off by the district. So that way they've hopefully considered things like student data privacy, integration with other systems like textbooks or student information systems. So that way when teachers go into the app and go to try and do what they need to do, the experience is going to be that much better because potentially the district may have already loaded rosters in for you or other types of things that they can do when it's a district sponsored app versus when you're using something that's out there on the internet for free. And I also think too, another thing that districts could potentially look into is the idea of implementing a professional development PD platform, whether that be something that you use and you preload with all of your own district content, something that is content separate from your district and is created by the platform itself. Really the best bet though, is if you can find a platform that integrates the two. Um, so that way you have your district facing, but then you also have content from the specific provider. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of the times with those partners, they are affiliated or they are sanctioned by certain companies. So that way, even if you can't update your professional development to meet the differentiated needs of your educators, the platform can help fill that because they have those connections with those brands. Also too, you know, not every school district has someone specific for educational technology PD, or of course, you know, one of the big things that I've been noticing as a result of just the, the political climate is a renewed focus on civic education. Not everybody has an expert in civic education working at the district level to provide PD. I know in a district I worked, one of the teachers was focusing in on that as another duty as assigned. So now in pandemic land, probably not able to do that as much as they wanted because there's so much more emphasis or there's so much more um, they have to be doing to prepare for their classes. So that might fall by the wayside. But when you think about these different platforms, they probably have an expert to help fit that need. So then that way your teachers can, if can go get that content. And again, it's in a place that if you adopt the platform as a district that you sanction and you are like, yes, we like this. Um, so uh, just thinking about kind of the big nuggets, synchronous, asynchronous, making sure you differentiate between training. So those points and clicks and professional development, which starts with the content or pedagogy and layers the technology in. And then thinking about potentially bringing in some extra help, maybe via a platform. So that way it can help fill the gaps for your educators based on you know what resources you currently have in district. So hopefully there's some good things people can take from that and mo use moving forward. Yeah, those are great strategies. And I think too, how you mentioned making sure that teachers are acknowledging their comfort levels and what level they're at with certain technology tools so that they're in the right PD sessions and know where they should be um, is really important, especially when they're not all physically together and can talk about that stuff. So great tips for differentiating PD. I hope everyone gets um, actionable takeaways they can use in their own district. Um, Ari, if people want to learn from you further, where can they find you? You can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet as EdTechAri. So just type that into the search bar and I will see you online. Perfect. We'll link that below and hopefully people will engage with you. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Of course. Thank you.